All right, this is my DJI Mini 3 Pro review. There's no doubt that the Mini 3 Pro is the next generation of sub 250 gram drones. It's amazing how much technology they have been capable of packing into this really, really powerful package. It offers a lot of premium features like 4K 60 FPS. You get the possibility to shoot a horizontal as well as vertical mode natively, so you don't need to crop in on the images to be able to use that format on other social platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and uh, of course, uh, YouTube Shorts. It has a very low aperture of 1.7 that will let in a lot of light and will make it a breeze or very easy for you to capture footage during low light. It was not there from the beginning, but not soon after the launch, we got the capabilities of a DCINE-like flat color profile in 10-bit for those of you that are into color grading. And it offers a lot of tracking capabilities also being available during quick shots and even when you're using the drone in portrait mode. It is equipped with front, bottom and rear obstacle avoidance sensors that will protect you against collision. And all of this is topped off with an amazing 35 minutes of flight time. The drone is available in three configurations. The one where you get the smart controller with the built-in screen, one where you get a controller like the one that you know from the Air 2S and the Mini 2, which is called the DJI RCN1, I think it's called, where you have to use your smartphone on top of the controller to operate the drone. You can also buy the drone without any controller and then you can reuse if you have one lying around anyway. The three base configurations are starting at 669 for the DJI Mini 3 Pro with no RC. Then you can get it including the old smart controller for 759 US dollars. And if you want to have the new smart controller included, you have to hone out $909. You will soon realize that one battery is not enough for your drone. So of course you can buy a Fly More kit that will give you two additional batteries, a bag and a charging cradle, as well as some of the other accessories that we are used to uh, with DJI drones. Except from a charger, which in this case you have to provide by yourself. The Fly More kit will set you back additionally 189 US dollars. In some areas of the world, it's possible to buy a plus battery that will extend the flight time on paper to 45 minutes. It flies and operates super smooth, probably the best in class. I've not tried every drone on the market, but it is really, really a pleasure to fly. It does seem to struggle a little bit more in high winds compared to the Mini 2 and definitely compared to the Air 2S, which is kind of expected. It's not a big deal and it's something that you can handle if you plan your mission carefully. Like for instance, flying into the wind on your way out. It is super quiet, which is a big advantage if you're flying in urban areas, so you minimize the disturbance of the people that are living in these areas. The selection of the size and prop pitch as well as the RPM of the motors makes it have a really, really pleasant flavor that is not annoying to the ear. It's very, very nice with an aperture of 1.7, but because this is a fixed aperture drone, there's really no way of reducing the amount of light that you are letting through into the sensor. The only way to get your exposure right is to crank up the shutter speed. So if you're not using any kind of fillers on this drone, you will see some insane high shutter speeds when you're flying during a daylight operation. This also means that you need to watch out for the highlights as these are easily getting blown out. But luckily DJI made a really nice implementation for using ND fillers on the drone. It's very easy to replace the fillers and by that reducing the amount of light through the lens. You simply just twist the glass in front of the lens and then you mount the appropriate ND filter. One thing that I wish they have done differently with the implementation of the DJI RC is the screen recorder. For me as a content creator, it's very important for me that I can record the screen as it's a crucial part of the videos that I make for you guys. But the resolution is super low, that's one thing, and it does not record audio. Audio is so important when I have to sync up everything in post. So this is definitely something that I wish for in a version 1.1 of the smart controller is to be able to get at least 1080p screen recording with audio enabled. 
When we are talking flight time, we of course know that the, the manufacturer is stating those under ideal conditions. But in this case, it's actually a joke. I have not been possible to get any of the three batteries that I have above 25 minutes. According to the spec sheet, you should get 34 minutes, which is quite a significant reduction to the claim that DJI is making. Then you can just opt in for the plus option and get the 45 minutes of flight time, which in reality is probably not 45 minutes, it's more, maybe more like 35 minutes. But that's not an option because I live in Europe and uh, DJI has decided not to sell the plus battery in Europe because that will bring the drone above 250 grams. But 25 minutes without me doing something crazy is really disappointing. Everybody was super excited when they learned that this drone would actually have obstacle avoidance sensors in the front, back and bottom. But in my world, this is a pretty much a pointless. As the drone is not protected on the side where it is most likely to crash when you're using uh, some of the tracking or automated flight modes. The specs when you look at them is really, really awesome. But you need to know that you can't do every combination of these specifications uh, if you think that is possible. As an example, if you're running a 4K 60fps, none of the tracking options will be available. That's at least something you need to be aware of. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you on the next one.